What a big mahalo for the Royal Hawaiian Band Glee Club. All right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Kapole Hale. And thank you for welcoming us to Kapole Hale. Thank you all for being here. The City Council's Honorary Certificate Program honors and acknowledges those individuals and groups who have made an impact in our local, national, and international communities. Mr. Clerk, our first recipient. Good morning, Mr. Chair and Council Members. Our first presentation recognizes the Department of Facility Maintenance and the Honolulu Police Department for their contributions and success to the 13th Festival of the Pacific Arts and Culture, FestPAC. This presentation is made by Council Member Say. Council Member Say? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Good morning, colleagues, esteemed guests, members of the audience. It is my pleasure this morning to recognize the Department of Facilities Maintenance and the Honolulu Police Department for their vital role in supporting the 13th Festival of the Pacific Arts and Culture, the world's largest celebration of indigenous Pacific Islanders, which was held from June 6th to 16th of 2024. Their remarkable efforts and invaluable contributions have been instrumental in ensuring the festival's success. But before I go further on, I would like to introduce our distinguished guest honorees this morning. Please raise your hand when your name is called. But before I do that, for the Halava crew, could Council Member Cordero please come up and when I call their name, you can present their certificates. That way, it's much more easier. Okay. Take your time. There's no rush. From the Department of Facilities Maintenance Halava crew, we have Sean Barboza. Sean. Oh, come on up, Sean. <laughs> Mr. Scott Kaku. Scott. <laughs> Mr. Ed Segovia. Ed. Oh, there's Ed. <laughs> Mr. William Hippa. Mr. Harry Macalena Jr. <laughs> Harry. Mr. Gary Cariaga is not here, so let's proceed on. Oh, Mr. Doug Andrade is not here. Casey Pavlovsky. <laughs> Carrie Keka Oha is not here. Council Member Cordero. Lego Dozen. Lego? All right. And, I'll, and I like this last person. His first name is really uh, delicious for me. Giovanni Castiglia. <laughs> From the Department of Facilities Maintenance, the YNI Kapole crew, we have Council Member Tupola presenting the certificates. Mr. Joseph Perry. Joseph, are you here? <laughs> Mr. Ivanhoe Isla. Ivan, thank you very much. Ivan. <laughs> Mr. Stephen Balbirona. Stephen. <laughs> Mr. Jonathan Clark. Jonathan, thank you. Mr. Cor Rilan, Cor. <laughs> Mr. Ryan Rivera, Ryan. <laughs> and finally, we have Mr. Kihau Apana. Kihau? Okay, great. Thank you very much. At this time, may I call upon the Vice Chair, this is Council Mem Member Kiaina, to make the presentations to the Honolulu Police Department, District 1, 
Lieutenant Hugh Shin Lin. Hugh, congratulations. <laughs> and finally, from another department, which is the Department of Environmental Refuse Service, Kapa'a Facility, Mr. Craig Shoda. Craig. Through DFM and HPD's unwavering commitment and collaboration, the vision for the village build out at FESPAC was realized, making this global <clears throat> celebration of indigenous Pacific Islanders truly extra extraordinary. On Friday, May 31st of 2024, and Sunday, June 2nd of 2024, the teams from DFM successfully loaded and transported four truckloads of materials each day from the nation of Hawaii in Waimanalo to the Hawaii Convention Center. Their seamless coordination with the Department of Land and Natural Resources and the Albizia Project led to the removal of over a thousand invasive trees, which were used to construct 24 holidays for the festival. Additionally, HPD played a crucial role in ensuring the safe transport of these materials to the Hawaii Convention Center. The professionalism, positive attitudes, and diligent work of the teams from DFM were highly praised by the festival organizers. At the festival's conclusion, the teams again demonstrated their commitment by hauling away materials which will be generously donated to various Aloha Charter School, Oahu Charter Schools with HPD safeguarding the secure delivery of these materials. Our special acknowledgement would go to Mr. Craig Shoda for providing the truck and the low boy from the Department of Environmental Services Refuse, Kapa. Their dedication and teamwork were instrumental in bringing the vision of FESPAC to life, leaving an unforgettable legacy in this monumental celebration of the Pacific Islander culture. At this point in time, Therefore, the City Council, on behalf of the City and County of Honolulu, hereby recognizes and honors the Department of Facility Maintenance and its employees and the Honolulu Police Department and its employees for their contributions and the Department, excuse me, of the Environmental Services, also for their contributions and success to the 13th Festival of the Pacific Arts and Culture. The Council wishes them the very best for their continued su success and support to the County of Oahu. And to all of you, Uncle Calvin has one request, Chair Waters. Don't retire, please. Thank you. <laughs> Just a quick shout out to DFM, not only for the hard work that they do on FESPAC, but the hard work that they've done all year long on all the other city projects. So mahalo to DFM, Department of Facility Maintenance. <laughs> Mr. Clerk, our next recipient. Our next presentation congratulates Hawaii Gas on the occasion of its 120th year anniversary. This presentation is made by Council Members Talba and Dos Santos Tam. All right, good morning. Congratulations to the Honolulu Gas Company, which is celebrating its 120 year in business. Come on, everybody. Yes. <laughs> Established in 1904 by Willem Daman, 
The company has been a key part of Hawaii's sustainable energy landscape. Today, the company serves diverse communities across the state, fueling homes and businesses on Oahu. Hawaii Gas has demonstrated its commitment to the people of Hawaii, ensuring a well-being of Hawaii's residents through charitable contributions, workforce development, and partnerships with local organizations. I yield the floor to Councilmember Dos Santos Tam. Thank you. Hawaii Gas plays a vital role in diversifying the state's energy portfolio. The company provides clean energy to residents and businesses across the Hawaiian Islands. Hawaii Gas's employees, past and present, have exemplified professionalism, integrity, and dedication in delivering essential energy services to customers, ensuring that the company remains a trusted energy provider for our entire state. I'll yield the floor back to Councilmember Tolba. The Honolulu City Council takes great pride in honoring and recognizing Hawaii Gas on its 100th anniversary and extends its heartfelt aloha and mahalo nui loa for the company's dedication, contributions, and service to our community. Mr. Clerk, our next recipient. Our next presentation congratulates and honors the 2023-2024 Miss American Scholar title holders for their dedication and service to the community. This presentation is made by Councilmember Talba. Congratulations to the Miss American Scholar title winners. The National Queens who came from Hawaii, Pennsylvania, and Tennessee have su successfully completed a full year uh, since being crowned in Austin, Texas. They include Little Miss Natalie Abrigado. Go ahead, raise your hand so everyone knows who you are. Uh, young Miss Zoe Corpus. Preteen Lilinoi Mawai. And Miss Joanna Mabalat. So, my daughter, Mahia, founded Miss American Scholar to give young women all over the nation an opportunity to exhibit their inner strengths, talents, and accomplishments with the primary focus on uh, community service, academics, and working towards future goals. Miss American Scholar helps young women gain confidence and poise. The organization provides scholarship winners so they, uh, they can uh, further their education. Miss American Scholar contestants partner with Brave uh, a nonprofit that Mahia established to combat the problem of bullying. They participated in numerous community service events, talent showcases, and advocacy efforts centered around personal passions. The Honolulu City Council takes great pride uh, in recognizing Miss American Scholar winners and extend its heartfelt thanks for their dedication and service to the community. Thank you. Mr. Clerk, our next recipient. Our next presentation honors and recognizes Ark of Safety Christian Fellowship for their faithful commitment to our community. This presentation is made by Councilmember Tupola. Today, I am thrilled to recognize the Ark of Safety Christian Fellowship for their faithful commitment to the community. 
We have Apostle Jay Amina, if you can say hello, Pastor Jerry Amina, Pastor Jadine Tuine, Nalani Amina, Nicole Kayo, and Chantel Brichette. Can you guys give them a round of applause, please? If you don't know who Arca Safety is, you're about to get to know who they are. So on the west side, they are very well known, and we thank each and every one of the individuals here today for the role they have played in their vision to win the loss to the cross, being the cornerstone of faith for the community by tirelessly working to reach, teach, build, equip, and send individuals forth in the name of Christ. They have significantly impacted the community since 1946 with their ministry. In January 2000, the church underwent a significant transformation with the adoption of the name Arca Safety Christian Fellowship, formerly known as White and I Pentecostal Faith Mission, which I believe is still on White and I Valley Road, their original church. This new identity symbolized the church role as a safe haven for individuals seeking spiritual guidance and belonging. As their membership has grown, so has their physical presence with the construction of a new building and the expansion of properties to support diverse ministries. Their commitment has further exemplified the establishment of Ark of Safety Christian Academy in 2003, nurturing the next generation in faith. Through the academy, though the academy had temporarily closed in July 2023, they eagerly anticipate its reopening continuing a legacy of educational excellence through impactful community outreach initiatives, such as the annual marriage conference, Easter egg hunt, and Thanksgiving feeding programs, they have shared love and made a tangible difference in the lives of many. Their fellowship has not only connected with the local community, but has also fostered hope and support for those in need. I'll briefly share two of my most recent memories with their church. One was joining the new location for the egg hunt in Kapolei. So right here in the Kapolei homestead, they they changed the location from when I entered to here. And I just want to say that it really brought life to the Kapolei homestead. Even though some of them have been around for a while, it's still fairly new. And just seeing the whole entire homestead activated, walking and enjoying the concert and multiple days, I have no clue what it feels like to organize such a large event. But I do thank you tremendously for what you've done for the Kapolei area. The second most recent memory I have in working with your church was hosting a crime town hall at your location at White and I Mall with over 500 people at our town hall and seeing Pastor Amina pray over the community and that we had a place where we could talk about issues that are important but still have a place where people could share their belief, their faith, their prayers because that's really what we need in White and I right now. And we're so grateful. We're so grateful that through all of it, the challenges in each of the building locations that you guys have never given up but gotten stronger. Every place that you've moved to, every life that you've touched, whether they're still with your church or not, only good things to say about Pastor Amina and all of your family and all the people at the church. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for what you do for our community. Today, on behalf of the Honolulu City Council, we honor the Arca Safety Christian Fellowship. We recognize their exceptional efforts of leadership in making a lasting difference in the lives of individuals, embodying the values of compassion, generosity, and community support. One more round of applause for Arca Safety. <laughs> Mr. Clerk, our next recipient. 
Our next presentation congratulates the Native Hawaiian Legal Corporation for 50 years of advancing justice for Native Hawaiians. This presentation is made by Council Member Kia Aina. Aloha kakahiaka. Aloha. This morning I am pleased to recognize the hardworking and passionate staff of the Native Hawaiian Legal Corporation, often referred to as NHLC, for 50 years of advancing justice for Native Hawaiians. Today we are joined by Makalika Noholoa'a, Executive Director of the organization and NHLC staff. Please raise your hand when called and audience members, please hold your applause until everyone has been introduced. Henderson Hui Hui, Liula Christensen, Ihilani Chu, Kersha Durant, Aune Kusat, Tarina Faagao, and Grace Lee. <laughs> Welcome to Kapolei Hale. The Native Hawaiian Legal Corporation is a nonprofit charity and law firm that was founded in 1974 during the Native Hawaiian Cultural Renaissance with a mission to protect and advance Native Hawaiian identity and culture. The organization was originally formed as an all-volunteer attorney referral service, initially called the Hawaiian Coalition of Native Claims. Today, it is one of the longest serving institutions providing civic legal aid for issues concerning Native Hawaiians, Native Hawaiian uh, culture and communities, often pro bono, fulfilling the community's unmet need for a law firm devoted to Native Hawaiian advocacy. The organization played a significant role in securing significant Native Hawaiian rights at the State of Hawaii's 1978 Constitutional Convention and set the foundation for landmark law related to traditional and customary rights, establishing the Office of Hawaiian Affairs and the designation of Olelo Hawaii as an official language of the State of Hawaii. Since its founding, NHLC has become the preeminent Native Hawaiian legal practice in Hawaii representing families, practitioners, and communities to exercise their rights and steward the evolution of law related to Native Hawaiian culture. NHLC is a steadfast resource for the Native Hawaiian community, resolving complex issues impacting matters related to Native Hawaiian culture, including Hawaiian homelands, burial protection, kuleana lands, and land use. More recently, in 2023, in the wake of the devastating Maui fires, NHLC mobilized its staff to provide legal assistance, information, and resources for fire victims as part of an all-hands response in the aftermath of the disaster. Therefore, the Honolulu City Council extends our deepest gratitude to the Native Hawaiian Legal Corporation for its exceptional legacy of service, dedication, and contribution to the Native Hawaiian community in the state of Hawaii and congratulate the organization on the occasion of its 50th anniversary. Mahalo nui loa. Thank you so much. Mr. Clerk, our next recipient. Our next presentation recognizes Wayne Koito on attending 100 consecutive University of Hawaii football games. 
This presentation is made by Council Member Dos Santos Camp. Thank you. Well, if you've ever been to a UH football game over the past few years, you will instantly recognize Wayne Coito. In fact, by my count, I think he has been to more home games and more consecutive games than some of the coaching staff. <laughs> With us uh, today, in addition to Wayne, we have his uh, family and friends collectively, his cheerleaders, I guess. Um, we have Fuchsia Yamashiro, Dori Koito, Mike Koito, and Kelsey Koito. We have Sarah Cox and John Ferreira, Ryan Sue, Rita Metzinger, Leula Christensen, Amy Bynes, and Nainoa Mao. <laughs> Wayne's love of sports, particularly his unwavering support for the University of Hawaii Rainbow Warriors football team has been a cornerstone of his life. Having attended now more than 100 consecutive UH games over the past 16 seasons, creating a lasting connection with fellow fans, both locally and globally. Through his company, Hawaii Sports Fans, Wayne has transformed his passion for sports into a profession, offering tailored travel experiences for fans to follow UH and professional teams all across the US and internationally, while emphasizing the importance of cultural experiences alongside sporting events. Wayne's dedication, though, extends beyond sports. He's an accomplished actor and TV personality with notable appearances on Hawaii Five-0, Days of Our Lives, and various films, demonstrating his versatility and commitment to his craft. And beyond this, um, he loves his family, I know that. And uh, the, as the eldest of five children, Wayne's upbringing instilled in him a strong work ethic and sense of responsibility, leading him to become an Eagle Scout, serve a Vietnamese-speaking mission, and earn dual bachelor's degrees in economics and computer science from Vassar College. Wayne's streak of attending 100 consecutive UH football games, culminating with the Warriors' winning season opener against Delaware State on August 24th, serves as a testament to his loyalty and passion for the team, and really is an inspiration to all the rest of the UH fans out there. So be it resolved that the Honolulu City Council, on behalf of the people of the city and county of Honolulu, recognizes and congratulates Wayne Coito for attending 100 consecutive UH games and his outstanding dedication to the UH Rainbow Warriors and his impactful contributions to the community. So thank you and congratulations, Wayne. <laughs> Mr. Clerk, our next recipient. Our final presentation honors Genshu Price for his leadership in sustainability and educational empowerment. This presentation is made by Council Member Weyer. Mahalo Chair, I have the distinct honor of welcoming Genshu Price to Council Chamber today at Kapolehale. And also present today is his mother Maria and his brother Mikey. Genshu, a 16-year-old resident of Haula has demonstrated extraordinary leadership and environmental stewardship through his creation of Bottles for Change, a 501c3 nonprofit organization dedicated to funding college tuition for Hawaii students by recycling cans and bottles. Genshu's vision began at the age of 10, and Bottles for Change became an official nonprofit three years ago while Genshu was a student at King Intermediate. Bottles for Change College, apologies, Bottles for College has formed over 30 partnerships with prominent organizations such as Quiloa Ranch, United Airlines, Outrigger Hotels, and others, while supporting local businesses, schools, events, and film locations throughout Hawaii. Bottles for College has recycled over 1.7 million cans and bottles, significantly reducing waste and promoting environmental sustainability. 
Bottles for College has awarded $43,500 in college scholarships to support local students on their educational journeys and has further demonstrated its commitment to community support through its Bottles for Maui Disaster Relief Program, which has provided $10,000 in aid to those impacted by the Maui wildfires. As an 11th grade student at Myron B. Thompson Academy, Genshu is also enrolled in courses at Windward Community College, further exemplifying his commitment to both academic excellence and environmental action. By promoting the values of education, sustainability, and collaboration, Genshu continually inspires those around him to give back to their communities. And so on behalf of the people of the city and county of Honolulu, we hereby honor and recognize Genshu Price for his outstanding leadership in sustainability and educational empowerment through the Bottles for College initiative and for serving to inspire others to make long lasting contribution to their communities. And we wish you the best in all your future endeavors. Mahalo. This concludes our honorary certificate program. I'd like to thank again the Royal Hawaiian Band for what a beautiful, beautiful music you guys played. Thank you again. Aloha. We're in recess until 10 o'clock, members. 10 o'clock.